um, anyone who wants to prove himself to himself that there is a God, they, they need very basic proof. But because there are people confusing that person, oh no, God doesn't exist. It's only a delusion. Because people are confusing him and putting ideas into his mind, uh, all these atheists and all the, uh, the communists and all, and all the different ideas and theories, because there are all of these people putting the ideas into a person's mind, we need to address all of those issues and, and, and nullify them before we can prove. Otherwise, it is very simple. It is a simple instinct, a call from inside that says, yes, how can it be that everything came into being without a God? So, uh, that, that itself proves the existence of God. Is there a purpose of creation? That question. Is there a purpose? Is there a purpose of this whole creation? You know, everything has been created. The Quran says, uh, you know, asks the people, وَمَا خَلَقْنَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا لَاعِبِينَ You know, the creation of whatever is between the heavens and the earth is not in vain. It is not without any reason. وَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا We have not created you in vain. There is a purpose. Think into, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَإِنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ The Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, verse number 115, Do you think that we created you for nothing? And you will not return to us? There is no purpose of this creation? When you keep thinking, what is the purpose of creation? That will bring you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will bring you to divine law. Now, before actually entering the arguments of proving a God, I will not go into that unless, inshallah, we have had all the preliminaries. And then the argument that the ulama have, these are all the different schools of thought that I'm actually trying to uh, bring in. They say that human beings always look for perfection. If you say that, you know, everything was created for reaching their perfection. A seed's perfection is becoming a tree and giving fruit. A baby animal's perfection is that it becomes big and produces. There is a perfection for a plant and there is a perfection for an animal. Human beings think, do you only have these two perfections in you? Yes, we find these two perfections in us. You know, the, the plant and the animal. We grow we, we, we reproduce. But is that it? If that was the only reason that we were created, then we would be no different than plants and animals. There must be a higher state for human beings. They should think into the creation that their perfection must be higher because animals and plants do not have intellect. They do not have choice, free will. So, we must think into this that our perfection is higher than the animals and the plants. Yes? So the perfection for the human beings is higher. That perfection is either spiritual, as our ulama have said, that uh, the intellect itself takes you to the next stage and says that, yes, your perfection, the takamul in the human beings is to have belief in one God. You know, that's the perfection to beautify your spirit, to beautify yourself with the perfect life, the perfect life in this world and the hereafter. That is the perfection of the human beings. To have all the beautiful characteristics. The Holy Prophet, when he's saying that, Inna I have been sent to take the humanity to its peak in, in, in conduct and, and morality. So the human uh, perfection is to, to have the highest level of conduct, morality. Who will teach you that? Will you know by yourself or will someone be sent to teach you that? Some things are inborn. They have been given to you in your nature. Everyone following me so far? Some things are in you. In you. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the, the basis of good and evil. You know, they are in you. You can, certain things are good and certain things are evil. You can judge that through the intellect. This is khair and this is shar. This is good and this is evil. Theft, murder, lying, oppression. Yes, you can, even if a person doesn't believe in a religion, 
his nature will tell him this is all evil. Did everyone follow that? Telling the truth, justice, all of these are good even if you don't follow a religion. And hence, in Usul al-Kafi, the Imams have said, Allah sent two types of prophets. Ones that came outside and they told you the Sharia and ones are within your own mind. That's your aql that tells you that there is good and evil. Okay? So that good and evil, the, the, the conscious inside you, on the Day of Judgment, Allah will question everyone on it, even if you did not believe in Islam, that look, I gave you that conscious, I gave you the, the conscious to judge between good and evil. Why did you not follow that? So everyone has it. Okay, everyone? I would like to end it here and then inshallah go. So, uh, in the next session we'll go uh, into the next argument. Uh, if there are any questions. There are two types of prophets, one that are outside, like from Adam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and one of the uh, prophets is your own intellect, aql. Your aql guides you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your aql guides you to good, your aql tells you that this is evil and takes you away from it. So your aql itself is one of the prophets from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is one of the guides. Very good question. Now, we had said that every people, every nation has a hadi, has a guide. Is, does that mean that they did not have a physical prophet? And Allah said, look, I've given you aql anyway, so I'm going to judge you. Or is it that no? No, because in another verse it says, We sent a prophet, Rasulah. So that hadi, yes, everyone has it, except for the, the, the children and the, uh, the insane. They will not be judged. They will all go to paradise without any accountability. But Allah, for every people, have sent two types of prophets. A physical prophet came. A messenger came to them. Because ba'ath is sending. Be'sat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a physical prophet outside and he also gave you intellect. So it's a very good question. So Allah gave you both to every people, to every nation. And as a whole, they may have denied it, and as a whole, they may accept. And sometimes some people will accept, and some people will deny. Okay? Two more questions. Yeah, good question again. Even Hindus do not believe in many gods. They say Ishwar or the final authority or the supreme god is one. All others are signs of God and they take you to God. Okay? God has uh, dissolved in these beings. Okay? They do not deny the oneness. Even the Sikhs say Rab. They, you know, when they use the word Rab, it is taken from the Muslims. They say it's one. And likewise, the Buddhists and all the other faiths. But what is it that makes you a Muslim? The, the Jews and Christians believe in a God, but the Christians obviously bring in Trinity, but they say there is one God. And they believe in the hereafter, but there will be different interpretations of that one God and the hereafter. For example, the, the Jews may deny the Barzakh, for example. Or the, the souls are uh, confused and hanging around after death until the Day of Judgment or something like that. So those, there will be differences on those three things, on the, the God, the messengership and the hereafter. The, you become a Muslim when you accept the belief according to the Quran and the Holy Prophet in the God. You believe and accept the prophets being infallible, all the prophets. Uh, all the Muslims accept that. And they brought in, you do not accuse them of the sins that the Jews.